Hare Krishna. So I am very very grateful to all of you for coming for the fourth day. You all are not bored. So that gives me a lot of happiness. <laughs> so <clears throat> we'll be talking about uh, family and village Panchakosh. So before we start, we would as usual try to pray and receive the blessings of the Acharyas. So all of you all, you also can play, pray along with me. Hare Krishna, Hare Bol. <coughs> Om Agyanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. So welcome one again. So today we will be discussing on family and village. How the Panchakosh concepts they apply on the family as well as on the village. So first we will talk about the family. So <clears throat> in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Arjuna, though he was such a great warrior, he was perplexed. So why was he perplexed? Was he not the same Arjuna with the same Gandhiv at Virat? And there the same, uh, all the people who were the enemies at Virat, the same people were there at the Mahabharata. But still, why it happened? Because of course it was the plan of Krishna. But when he got perplexed, the reason was that he didn't know black and white what exactly I should be doing. So that was the confusion. There are many shades of grey. So he did not know. He did not know what exactly is expected. Shreya syat nishchitam. That he did not know. So therefore he wanted to. To me, uh, Shreya syat nishchitam. To me, Brahm, means he was asking Krishna that you tell me. So therefore, uh, we should also know that we should be expert in switching from our positions we are having many positions in this world like we are an individual person so we are also a soul and then i am a soul i am a man a human being then i am a householder then i am a society entity you know i am a member of the society then i am a particular profession professional then i am a national citizen then I am a human being and I am also a part of the, a member of the environment. So, uh, at a particular time, in a particular circumstance, 
at a particular place we are supposed to act but at that time if we don't understand at with what role i am supposed to um, behave now then if we are not able to switch then we land up into trouble <laughs> dhritarashtra never was able to switch he was always a father he was always attached to his son he could never become a good king and that is why he also lost so all those who do not switch when it is required according to the time place and circumstance then they have problems so our priorities should be clear and we should know at various levels what all is my dharma means what am i supposed to do and what am i uh, so all those first we are supposed to understand that dharma so therefore let us see at various levels what all are the various dharmas so as a individual i should be uh, seeking for my swa dharma so how should i know my swa dharma how does a person know that this is my swa dharma yeah so there are three things that we should keep into mind the first is what values am i with what principles am i living my life then second is what are my interests then the third is what is my personality whether my personality suits those interests whether whatever values i am following in my life uh, and but whether i am not interested or whether i am interested so all these three things we should assess and what comes is my swadharma if all the three are matching yes i have got value towards like my daughter when she uh, she got good grades in her school and then she had got a lot of affinity towards dance so when i told her ki you look at the values what are your values so you are a wonderful beautiful krishna devotee so this odissi nritya that you like whether the your values of life uh, they are compatible with it so she said yes odissi nritya means it is only done for the pleasure of jagannath i said very good let's go ahead then you have interest that is fine then is your personality suitable for it she was of course yes very good dancer her physique her um, everything it matched and therefore today she is a very wonderful odissi dancer so so that is swadharma of a individual then when we become a family member so the at family level you know we have got ashram dharma we have got kula dharma then at community level at community level we have jati dharma so again jati is not by birth again there are even today also when modi passed uh, narendra honorable prime minister narendra modi ji when he uh, passed some law uh, or some you know uh, at that time the community of goldsmiths they were very angry at him though they supported him support him always but still they were angry at him so there is a community always so it it may not be that by birth you are that but there is a jati of uh, goldsmiths there is a jati of engineers there is a jati of you know, so like that there is a community so at that we have got jati dharma it there is to be jati dharma then at professional level we have got varna varna dharma the brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra and then at society level so samajik dharma there is samajik dharma that means all the 16 sanskar 16 sanskaras are there and then at country level we have got desha dharma so at desha dharma there are various vyavasthas there is dharma vyavastha there is rajya vyavastha there is artha vyavastha there is shikshan vyavastha so dharma vyavastha means religious system then rajya vyavastha means administrative system then at uh, uh, you know artha vyavastha means economic system and shikshan vyavastha that is the education system so uh, then at humanity level what is the dharma that humanity the manav dharma manavta dharma you know to become being human <laughs> and then environment at environmental level jeev daya becomes our dharma that means sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah 
सर्वे मद्रा पश्यंत मा कश्चि दुख भाग भवे सो दैट मीन्स अ पर्सन हेज गॉट हिज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टुवर्ड्स फॉरेस्ट टुवर्ड्स रिवर्स Towards birds, towards aquatics, towards animals, etc., etc., insects, everyone. So he has to be responsible to. He cannot be careless when he acts in a particular way. It has to be in harmony with everyone in the world. Then the entire creation. There is prakritik dharma, the you know sattva raja tamo based on the gunas, and then as a soul, when all these uh, dharmas. are dealt with properly with harmony then only the soul yeah is ready he has completed his karma yoga very nicely and then he, he is then he can sit down in one place and as it is said in the yoga huh? he can have dharana and then dhyan and then go into samadhi so till that time this prakriti has to be dealt with at different different levels and then uh, you don't have to be confused so at the soul level you uh, can attain moksha after that and something is there beyond that when the soul meets god that is then your dharma is that is your original constitutional position your original constitutional position is service to the lord devotion bhakti so prema so that is achieved at that level so these are all various rungs that you that we have to deal with and we should know the uh, what we call uh, the priority what priority comes first what priority comes afterwards because uh, like <clears throat> it is said that for a family a individual can be sacrificed for the good for the welfare of the family if some bad element is there an individual then he can be sacrificed for the good of the family then for the for the sake of the entire community a family may be sacrificed can be given up then for the good of the village the community may be given up for the good of the nation entire village can be given up and for the whole world a complete nation can be given up yeah now some nations are getting developed like this who can be just given up because they are a pain to the entire world <laughs> anyways and lastly for god the entire world can be given up yeah so in this way we understand the priority that priority how it has to be given up so we should be very clear about it otherwise we will become confused like arjuna in the battlefield of kurukshetra so coming back to as a householder what all things are there in panchakosh i will uh, now we will be discussing about that so what is a home you know application of panchakosh on at family level so what is a home whenever this word comes into our mind we become relaxed we feel so good so home is a place where one is assured shelter one has no worries no competition no fear no guilt no envy no resentment right because it is our family means each person is me it's like me everyone is like myself we can uh, relate to each other so well so one feels loved cared for they feel joyful they feel satisfied protected and strong so that is a family so a home or a family is the fundamental unit of the nation so therefore if the family is uh, sudrad means uh, if it is healthy that means the nation also will be very strong so therefore family is very very important so grahastha ashram why it is called ashram 
ashram is that place where ashray of the lord is taken so uh, <clears throat> all the people when they come together and when they uh, ec they accept that the lord is the proprietor of this home then it becomes grahast ashram so the purpose of the home so that means we are talking about the anandmay kosha of the family so the main principle of anandmay kosha is what the main principle that we have discussed in the previous uh, lectures the main principle of anandmay kosha is gratefulness isn't it so gratefulness and how to purify that anandmay kosha by seva and tyag service and sacrifice so the main qualities which uh, if there has to be gratefulness then what are the qualities that are required respect service sacrifice you know so all these things unless they are there the grahast ashram cannot uh, you know be blown very nicely in like a flower from bird state to flower so it needs a lot of sacrifice it needs a lot of respect towards each other it needs a lot of uh, service attitude towards each other yeah so uh, even in vivaha you know before entering into vivaha all these things have to be taken into consideration today if you ask anyone a majority of the people when people come to us for counseling before marriage so when we ask them uh, why do you want to marry uh there are very weird answers um maybe mistake <laughs> then some people say uh now i've got a lucrative job so i'm ready yeah i can marry now or sometimes some people say uh because the proposal has come from such and such place so i'm marrying acha no need of assessment no no problem then some people say that you know i want to have a companion in life uh i feel very lonely so therefore i am married then some people would say that you know <laughs> we met each other and you know or we saw each other and you know we fell in love and now therefore we want to marry so there are so many reasons and mind they are right answers all answers are right nothing is wrong in this material world and nothing is wrong <laughs> uh, right also <laughs> and then uh, some others would say uh, all have to marry so i am also marrying i mean everyone marries so i am marrying and then there is another answer like uh, to enjoy of course so to fulfill the needs of the body and mind yes all these answers are right and uh, there is gratification of senses also in grahast ashram but these reasons are not enough what do you think are these reasons enough we have to have solid uh, purpose if the purpose if the base is not very solid very strong then uh, the building is not going to stand for long so therefore let us you know uh, meditate upon what should be the purpose of marriage so uh, otherwise it will lead to you know if it doesn't lead to divorce at least you know there will be family conflicts then there will be nuclear families there will be you know living a life of tolerance and disappointments and uh, there will be children in babysittings and then parents will be in the old asylums and so many things happen which are like uh, not palatable so to avoid all these things if a proper if you understand what is the real purpose the real purpose which comes about if we meditate on that then yes then then we have actually made the nice base so our parents have given birth to us our parents have raised us with so much of love our parents they have educated us so we are indebted to them why because we cannot repay all these things can we give birth to our parents can we raise our Uh, parents uh, can we educate our parents no so therefore we are indebted to them and it is not only to the parents we are indebted 
to even the higher authorities devas devtas because of devtas so many things are you know arranged for us not only the devtas even there are so many authorities who uh, in the society there are so many authorities and because of them we have get, we get so many facilities to live our life isn't it so therefore we all are uh, responsible towards them we have to repay those debts and then what are how are we going to do it so by giving them in return a strong healthy skillful come on you know this okay five things a uh, healthy a uh, skillful then talented that means skillful and talented is one same thing then sensitive then conscientious and grateful individual a baby a a citizen who will support who will help who will be useful to the world who will take uh, charge of the deliverance of the ancestors who will take charge of maintaining the society in a very harmonious way to raise such a child if we also do it that means we also have contributed towards our family towards our society towards our nation so it becomes a wonderful responsibility marriage is not just for enjoyment it is a responsibility and when responsibility comes it becomes easier for us to <clears throat> uh, go through the austerity so what are the functions of the home now we are talking about the vidnyanmay uh, kosha the functions of the home is there are basically two things procreation and wealth creation so basically a family the anandamay kosha of the family is to serve the society serve everyone very nicely and by that way serve god to please god and therefore uh, these two are uh, become the main functions of the family yeah so my my temple uh, my uh, home has become a temple because we have uh, welcomed the lord so therefore now i ask donations for my temple is it possible <laughs> no so this grahastha ashram temple is not like that temple so that means now i have to go out and work and earn money for this temple so that means working and earning wealth also becomes devotional service because i am not doing it for myself i am i am doing it for the lord so therefore it becomes spirituality and so therefore this even artharjan and therefore how much money should we uh, make sky is the limit when you earn money sky is the limit when you earn fame sky is the limit you can do as much as you can but when it comes to using that wealth you know we should be using only for our needs it should not be used for our you know fulfilling our desires no only needs what is the difference between desire and need <laughs> so the desire means uh, <clears throat> whatever is asked by our senses and the mind and the needs needs are those things which are required to run this system which is created by god so this system is created just like a car needs the petrol it needs oiling it needs so whatever is required that has to be done so in the same way whatever is required for the maintenance of the body that is that are the needs so for needs so if our uh, family economy if it is not dictated by de desires but if it is dictated properly uh, you know by whatever are the needs then uh, the function of the the whole home i mean the family can go very nicely a person was asked how do you manage the economy of your family uh, so uh, ravindra sharma ji our teacher his answer was that <clears throat> if i earn 4 rupees 1 rupee with 1 rupee 
I repay my debt. With the another rupee, I give loan. With the third rupee, I buy heavens. And with the fourth rupee, I fill my stomach. <laughs> so this is a very nice sutra which we also can adopt. So by one rupee, I repay the debt means what? I use it for you know my parents and all the people who have because of whom I am existing. Then I give a loan. Means what? I do it towards my dependents. So tomorrow they will also. So that is the loan. And the third is I buy swarga. Means I do charity. By giving charity, I will go to heaven. So I do that. And then I fill my stomach with the last rupee. That means I fill the stomach means all the necessities that are there that I do it with the remaining one rupee. That is 25% of my salary income. So <clears throat> we are talking about that, that was about Artharjan. The main part is, of course, about the procreation. When a child is born, so the children, they are individual and they are independent. So they cannot be controlled by our desires. They cannot be controlled by our ambition. Our ambition. So then if we at all want to control, <laughs> then we can control by our good example, by our selfless love for them. If that we have, we can, yes, we can control them. So to have children with good character, it's a big challenge because it is connected to our example, our selfless love. My God. <laughs> So, therefore, giving birth to conceive, to deliver, to raise children, this is a very, very important activity. So, uh, you know, it is not possible just by, uh, you know, a parent and the school. No. To raise a child, that is not enough. To raise a child, you actually need a village. So let us see all these things. Raising a child, it is a very sensitive responsibility. 60% of the development of the child's psychology and the character, it is, uh, you know, where it is in the home. And out of it, 90% of the development actually happens, you know, where? in the womb and therefore it is very very important the birth in all you know the raising of the child and all those things the most important thing is giving birth so the importance of birth so at the time of birth also you know uh, <clears throat> whose darshan the child is going to have first what is he going to listen what is he going to taste? What is he going to hear? Huh? So all these things, who is handling the baby? So all these things determine his personality. It is very, very important. His personality means his vyaktitva and his character, his charitra. All these things are very, very important. So therefore, the mother and the child both have to be uh, protected. At delivery, after delivery also, they have to be well protected. And they can go on. Uh, there is Ekant for 10 days. Nowadays, in our hospital also, immediately there will be photo clickings and sending it to everyone. I mean, it's good. It's happy. People are happy about it. That's nice. But <clears throat> uh, this is what uh, we have heard from authorities, that they, sh they should be in Ekant. They should not be disturbed. And then only after... 10 days, after 10 days, or after even, you know, some say even 40 days, then they should be taken to the temple and there should be darshan of the Lord. First darshan of the Lord. Nishkramana. And then there should be uh, Surya darshan. Because because of Surya Dev, all these, uh, we have discussed this in the last, right? So because of Surya, a person is existing in this, all energies, it is nothing but solar energy. 
तो सूर्य देव जी सो ग्रेटफुलनेस टूवर्ड्स सूर्य देव एंड देन लोक दर्शन सो दिस इज हाउ इट हैज टू बी हैंडल्ड वेरी नाइस सो हेन्स द हजबेंड एंड द वाइफ यू नो बोथ ऑफ देम दे नीड टू बी एक्सेम्पलरी फर्स्ट देम सेल्स इन इस्टैब्लिशिंग अ आइडियल फैमिली so it is done uh, you know <clears throat> through samskaras so each child has to be taught how to become a father and mother by our own example the children they learn from their parents so vivaha is not for sense gratification it is for carrying on dharma through the uh, vansha parampara for shikshan you know for gyan there is guru shishya parampara so there are two paramparas by which you know so by uh, uh, vansha parampara dharma is learned and through guru shishya parampara uh, vidya gyan it comes so learning starts in the womb and it goes continues till the tomb <laughs> so school is a very small part of the learning experience that we have to understand so a well educated person so he he shows excellent qualities but he becomes first class gentleman but can there be a a dignity without degree gaurav shali without any degree can there be we have got examples like tulsidas we have got naneshwar maharaj we have got our gurudev so everyone we can see that uh, they have not acquired degrees but they are divine they are glorious they are guiding the entire planet earth so uh, <clears throat> good student that is vidyarthi he becomes a good var var means a husband he becomes a good grahastha he becomes a good pita that is father he becomes a good nagrik so today people they want to make their children a scientist a doctor a engineer they may become they may not become but they will certainly become father they will certainly become mother so how much training are we giving to them to become a good father to become a good mother a good human being a good citizen so this panchakosh this is the you know this sanskaras basically they are the purificatory culture which is aimed at bringing divinity divyatva divyata to this activity and also to its consequences so therefore let us understand Uh, what are these samskaras and you know the rites also serve the uh, this purpose of ensuring that the man and wife they become aware of spiritual duty to married life they it is not for exploitation so uh, therefore this concept has to be well understood to establish spirituality in their life these samskaras are meant of course uh what is the purpose of sanskaras purification of consciousness so for purification of consciousness uh, rupa goswami has already said that chanting reading scriptures visiting the dhams association of devotees worshiping tulsi yeah so all these things are given already for purification of then why these sanskaras so these sanskaras accentuate they support they are purak towards the spiritual pursuits and therefore we should uh, know these sanskaras and try to maximum maximum uh, implement it so first let us see what are these sanskaras so there are 16 sanskaras 16 sanskara the first four they are even before uh, the the child is born so wonderful isn't it so the first samskara is the garbhadhan samskar so this is before conceiving uh, <clears throat> the husband and wife they both pray to the lord 
that let a divine soul come to us whom we can serve very nicely and make him qualified to serve everyone else to the to the ancestors also to the society and everyone then there is pumsavana the second samskara this is done in the third month why it is done it is done for the uh, you know healthy strong and effulgent child so that is why pumsavana is done so that is for his swasthya that samskara is done then there is a simanto nayana parting of the hair it is done either on the fourth or sixth or the eighth month so the mother she is honored felicitated blessed and everyone expresses happiness that uh, she is pregnant and uh, very soon a member of the family is going to come so they express happiness and profusely bless her i still remember uh, during my daughter's uh, uh, birth so this simento nayano this ceremony was performed though it could not be done in a very uh, ideal way but still the ceremony was performed and we got really a wonderful divine child <laughs> then uh, <clears throat> soshanti home so i mean i'm i'm trying to say that these samskaras are so very important in whatever way we do it but samskaras have to be done then soshanti home uh, it is for the safe delivery of the child just a few days before delivery uh, it is done for the safe delivery of the child soshanti home then at birth you know when the actual birth happens at that time jata karma is done so when the child comes out uh, the the most important thing is the chanting of the <clears throat> mantras the lord's holy name and making him realize what is the purpose of his life and therefore chanting the mantras in the in our bhaktivedanta hospital our dr vivekananda shanbag his grace vishwaru prabhu he does it with such precision and such uh, devotion when all the babies when they are born and when we come to know about it so then uh, from the department of spiritual care uh, our mata ji's the spiritual care assistants they go and sometimes sometimes most of the times vishwaru prabhu he goes and does this uh, jata karma he uh, with you know uh, there are many things done with honey uh, name of the god is written on the tongue then hare krishna maha mantra is sung in the immediately even i remember when my daughter was born uh, i immediately ch- chanted hare krishna maha mantra i kept on chanting and she was crying and when i started chanting immediately that response you know she was looking at uh, the cornea of her eyes you know it came towards me and she stopped crying and she was attentive so that was such a wonderful blissful uh, experience i still cannot forget <laughs> same thing happened with my son also of course i chanted and uh, it was a very nice i i i was feeling like a instrument of god serving both of them then uh, nishkramana so the first outing that is the next the sixth samskara so uh, after 10 days after janma uh, as i said earlier also the deva darshan god, that is bhagwan uh, vishnu's darshan then surya darshan and then uh, loka darshan then others can see the child and then comes namakaran so giving the name that is on the 12th day we in marathi we call barsa so that 12th day uh, his name is given then poshti karma that is for the nourishment of the child every month the same tithi and the paksha of like there are two uh, pakshas in a month 15 days the waxing moon and the waning moon so there is krishna paksha and there is a uh, shukla paksha so whatever paksha and whatever tithi means the day hmm, uh, the child is born on that tithi and paksha every month there is this particular samskara uh, performed the poshti karma and then there is annaprashan so annaprashan is feeding grains so that is not before 4 months and for you know for girl it is 
on the fifth or the seventh month and for the male child for the boy it is either on sixth or the eighth month like that whenever the teeth come <laughs> so teeth come uh, teeth comes and therefore anna has to be now given that is a time so anna prashan is done at that time then uh, <clears throat> comes karna veda so piercing of the ears that is uh, done on the sixth or the seventh month so the atya atya means uh, father sister she takes the child on her lap and along with chuda karna and upanayan sanskar also sometimes it is done not a problem then then comes chuda karna so hair cutting so uh, hair cutting it is done uh, maybe after 3 years so at, at, on the third year uh, the uncle mama he makes the child sit on his lap and then the barber is called and then that ceremony happens then the 12th is vidyarambha entering the school at the age of 5 when he learns to write alphabets hmm? very so that is the vidyarambha sanskar and then the 13th sanskar is the upanan upanayan sanskar that is the gayatri initiation is given so that is at the 8 years from conception to 16 years in between any time it can be given upanayan sanskar then there is samvartana when the graduation happens so after 12 years of training shiksha is done so leaving while leaving the gurukul the samvartana sanskar is done and then vivaha sanskar that is marriage and then the last very very important sanskar antyeshti when the person dies <laughs> so even before taking birth and even after death we have got sanskaras yeah so funeral is done by so the antyeshti is done at funeral so that is shraddh whatever one does with shraddha that is shraddha karma so in this way i have described about the family we have to still talk about uh, the village so i'll move a little faster so the annamay kosh there is a recapitulation that we will do right now so what is the annamay kosh of the family the physical opulence like if we have to consider what is the family um, uh, Uh, annamay kosha so annamay kosha of the family is uh, you know a number of family how many family members are there how many number of old people are there the more the number the better it is because they are wise wise people then how much land is there how much uh, how many houses no huh? how big is the house then do you have a vehicle if the vehicle is there then bank balance then uh, investment how much gold is there how many uh, trees are there in your property and how many fruit bearing trees are there in the property then number of cows a person has then nearness to the river so you know all these things they are like the annamay kosh of the family right so the second is the pranamay kosh of the family so what are the what is the pranamay kosh of the family so we have seen those uh, <clears throat> what is the domain of pranamay the pranamay domain is skills and you know energy levels so uh, in the same way when we talk about when we consider the pranamay kosha of the family the education of the family members uh, family members relationship with each other how they perform festivals how they you know travel together how how they attend the sports so all these things the energy vibrancy all these things are the then uh, how many skilled people are there at home how many can cook how many can do farming how many can do driving how many of them can do plumbing electrician work how many of them can wash yeah vessels wash clothes so if uh, otherwise if the mother is has gone the whole family becomes handicapped is it like that or no everyone is skilled and talented hmm? so that is the pranamay kosha of the family how many of them know sanskrit how many of them know music dance so if that thing is there or do they need just television idiot box for to entertain themselves hmm? or whether they can have a very nice uh, conversation together intellectual conversation or you know very interesting con- uh, discussions on uh, on various personalities on events on ramayana mahabharat like that so that is the pranamay kosh of the 
how much is this family self reliant that is a pranamay kosha of the family right so now let us understand the manomay kosha of the family the manomay kosha of the family means manomay kosha what is the domain the sensitivity how much is this family sensitive so whether all the members experience togetherness whether you know at least once once hour a day whether they come together whether they eat together whether joint discussions are there regarding you know the books that they read the movies that they see whether they have joint discussions about you know the events programs any drama any school in their school if something happens do they come and discuss with the family they share or at the office something happened and papa also comes and discusses so all these things show the monomay kosha of the family whether i have the <clears throat> uh, whether i can yell remove my frustration and still be understood by the family or they judge hey what has happened to him <laughs> so is it like that or they uh, you know sometimes when um, sham sundar comes at my home where my child when he comes uh, and he just throws things here and there uh, people understand that he is hungry <laughs> so uh, you know whether people can understand the anger of other people or if suppose there is a fight how long does the fight uh, you know continues so that is a challenge whether Uh, the quarrel the fight you know whatever happens it is sorted before night hmm? how long does the fight the effect lasts you know or there is a difference of opinion for you know or i mean 7 8 days there is cutting we will not going to talk to you so if that is there then the anom an manomay kosh may have uh, uh, may need correction then whether the visitors are appropriately welcomed they are introduced to each one you know and their specific characteristics explained then when a call comes you know so uh, whether the message is passed on completely to that family member this also shows the monomay kosh then whether the friends of all the family members you know they visit home often you know my, my like the daughters friends the son's friend or sometimes when the friends of the whether they know each other you know so this is also this also shows the monomay kosh then whether when the donations are given whether the uh, whether the all the family members whether they know it <laughs> then uh, what is the response to the guests who come uh, who visit without any in uh, without any informing so atithi devo bhava whether that mode is there or not yeah whether any uh, other family they come and visit the home for prasad or sometimes staying for 2 3 days if it is happening that means the monomay kosh is really very good so whether they this family goes to other whether they have such friends family friends to go and visit so this also again so Uh, we can see in this uh, um, Radha Gopinath Bhakt Samaj, there is so much of constantly meetings and everyone is so well protected. So this is very nice. Then we'll talk about the Vidyan Mai Kosh of the family. So the whether the Vidyan Mai Kosh, uh, it is <coughs> considered when you know whether joint discussions are done. Uh, well, when the budget of home is made, when any big a uh, item has to be purchased so at that time also whether there is a joint discussion or you know one person buys it and others tolerate oh this he should have brought that you know <laughs> so like that then uh, whether there is a family policy of visiting the temple daily huh? or you know daily sadhana there is a plan for everyone that also shows the vidyan mai kosh the whole family goes out for a uh, annual picnic whether they go then whether the family uh, goes to you know relatives home to stay that we talked again in the manomay kosh also yeah it also shows the vidyan mai kosha then whether there is joint discussions on political matters on national issues whether there is joint discussion on social issues you know 
so if these things are done that means the vidyanmay kosh of the family is good then whether some families uh, feel free to come and have meals together once a month at least then uh, so whether religious festivals are celebrated how many religious festivals they all come together and you know for celebrate then whether appropriate planning is done for the growth of everyone's uh, spiritual life you know sadhana so and of course most important thing of the family observing the 16 samskaras whether it is happening hmm, that also shows the uh, like that uh, the vidyan may kosha now what is the anand may kosha of the family the anand may kosha of the family means uh, how much contribution this family is doing towards the society so contributions of the family to our society in i mean you know participate whether this this family votes during the elections very important then participating uh, with together in the social events then contributing uh, contribution of the family in preaching dharma whether this family is contributing or not hmm? so like that the we can actually consider and that is how we can see assess a family in fact in the book which i have written uh, there is a parameter there all these parameters are given and questions are given and you can we can actually uh, you know understand uh, what which kosha how much strength is there in my family for individual also there are there is a questionnaire for family also there is a questionnaire even as a indian citizen uh, how i can be a good citizen am i a good citizen or not whether my country is also how wonderful is my country through panchakosh also that can be assessed such a question is there uh, in the book so now let us come to the village panchakosh so uh, there is very less time remaining but i uh, i think i should finish it because tomorrow is the last day and there will be there is a lot more to be discussed at corporate level and at the national level so i hope it is fine with you so today we have got a terminology of you know global citizen so there is nothing go global it is american <laughs> so the whole world cannot become one village why because after every 100 or 200 kilometers you know the there is so much of change in the language in the lifestyle the civilization changes yeah just even in from mumbai to kolhapur the language changes so much so we can't have uh, we can't make a world one village it is impossible we cannot destroy the diversity the variety of the world but of course the world needs to be united but how the world needs to be united in consciousness that has to be understood so my my question is that why can't we appreciate others i'll just change the hmm. so why we cannot appreciate others variety why we must be you know why why we want the whole world to be one bharat india is that country which has shown the possibility of you know remaining united with mind boggling diversity on the face of earth <laughs> isn't it so it needs tremendous amount of humility and which which is being evident it is the uh, the whole world is witnessing how india stands together so many reversals are there but still we all stand united so in today's uh you know growing culture western culture i mean the respect for other cultures is diminishing you know so we we are all you know made program robots in the name of global citizen so bhartiyas they don't want to be global citizen sorry and make the whole world one village sorry indians since time immemorial they are satisfied you know with their village which is the whole world to them which is the whole world for them bhartiyas are not interested to grow their uh, national borders no they are not interested in imperial pursuits no why because they know the goal of life 
दे नो वॉट इज गुड एंड वॉट इज बैड अनुकूल से संकल्प प्रतिकूल से वर्जन दे नो दे आर अनकॉन्शियसली फॉलोइंग दिस यू नो पंचकोश मॉडल अनकॉन्शियसली दे आर फॉलोइंग इट दे डोंट इवन दे नॉट बी इवन नोइंग सो द व्यू ऑफ वेदर्स द वेदिक व्यू दैट इज नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द आनंदमय कोश वी दैट इज द मूड इज दैट वी बिलोंग टू नेचर the nature does not belong to us we belong to the nature and we are servants we are servants of the nature especially in the in the village village is also called gaav gaav means in sanskrit gaav means cow so a place where the cows they wander uh, with joy and without fear that is called gaav and who are human beings they are the servants of the cow even lord krishna he showed by his personal example how we should be living in a village in the village of that is vrindavan where cows are taken care of so and we always remain controlled by nature but what is the modern view modern mood the modern mood is like you know nature belongs to us and we can enjoy the nature and we can control it that is the problem so in in village the uh, the focus is on village prosperity not on the self so there are four main pillars how do we do it now we are talking about the vigyanmay kosh of the village so it is done by the four vyavasthas the four systems the education system the governance that is administrative system hmm? the raja vyavastha and then there is economic system artha vyavastha then there is spiritual the dharma vyavastha so when these systems are there so what are the pancha koshas of the village that has to be oh so sorry so what are the pancha koshas of the village so <clears throat> the annamay kosh the civilization the sabhyata huh? what civilization is so that is the annamay kosh of the family and its roots are where in economy then the the vidya and shikshan vyavastha the purpose of it is apara that means material prosperity material uh, you know aggrandizement so that is the pranamay kosh of the village then the culture that is the sanskriti its roots are in aesthetic vision so that is the monomay kosh of the yeah how the festivals are followed how the worship of the deities are done then how the dresses the decorations everything that is the culture then comes the tradition the parampara so parampara its mool its root actually is in the philosophy and the values that is the tatvajnana so that is the vidyanmay kosh of the village and the gyan and dharma dharma vyavastha so <clears throat> the purpose is para means spiritual spiritual prosperity so that forms the anandamay kosha so the uh, so in this way we can see the panchakosha of the village and um, i would like to give a glimpse the characteristic features of vedic village when there were no computers and you know modern gadgets people would get up early in the morning for preparation so there was no question of laziness why because you have to get up if you have to eat so you have to make those preparations and there were no time saving machines so physically they had to work you know they had to grind and so many things so therefore that engagement so therefore uh, everyone would remain healthy and mentally also sound and before going they would ensure that they eat they ate because with so much of uh, you know uh, endeavors the food was made so therefore people would ensure that they would eat in time and therefore they were very healthy and the most important thing is when they would work they would sing there was music had a very important aspect in their life it was a very important thing in their life so they were there were songs for every work so the uh, not only while doing aarti there was shankha and there were bell not only during aarti but even the bulls the cows 
they had bell in their neck even the horses had bell in their neck even horses had uh, ghungrus on their neck yeah because when with that even goats had bells in their neck even elephants had uh, you know bells in their neck why because when that thing is there with that sound with that lay uh, you know they would get uh, inspired to work more and more like if there is a handloom there was a handloom song the, so uh, when they would work the the instruments to, uh, for working they would act as the accompaniment for the music so the work naturally became devotion when for example when there was a flour mill yeah so when flour mill mill is working so that time also uh, there is a marathi song pat 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 patak pat patak pat kai nai kamat urak <laughs> like that there is a marathi song so when work is going on this is i mean the tradition of maharashtra that all works was done with music and it became a devotional service when there is a Uh, tanga wala tanga you understand yeah tanga so when that is uh, when the tanga wala he is riding his tanga at that time also there were songs even on bel gadi there were songs daul mora cha man cha ar daul man cha yega rama cha ban cha ar yega ban cha so in this way there were songs and in that devotional aspect also was there so in that work they would feel that energy and the work became devotional service then there is a blacksmith yeah lohar so when he is using his hammer and in that also he can sing wonderful songs airani cha deva tula thingi thingi vahu de abhal agat maya tujhi amavari rahu de so like that the songs would go along with that uh, their instruments so there was a relationship of the people with their uh, instruments with their weapons with their co-workers with their animals so there was such a wonderful harmony and in that way when they would work it was not just ordinary work they would achieve devotion so in the modern age the sound of the tractor the buses the rickshaws you know that lay that music has gone away people the per, that uh, life has become little nearest because of i'm not saying that you know this is right and that is wrong i'm just telling what it was and what it is that's it so today <clears throat> there are no schools to develop that beauty perception you know now we have uh, mental illness more so the reasons can be sorted out and i'm just trying to make out some uh, some facts and whether these things are possible in today's life we can always so no discipline because work was done in uh, less time uh, is done in less time nowadays yeah the clothes what about the clothes the clothes are already washed washing machine is there then what about oh the that floor we had to make oh the mixer grinder it's already done okay then what are you doing oh well i am playing pubg so a lot of you know unimportant activities have come into our life so this time saving machines are uh, giving us time to get engaged into not very important activities and still we are busy we are so busy we don't eat in time we are so busy we don't have time for each other for our near and dear ones we don't meet we don't talk we don't have time to go for funerals of people earlier days the entire village would gather for one person if he died but today that is missing let us tell some more features there were no shops people would uh, all the materials were created at home there were no hotels people would laugh <laughs> you know in ghor kalyug the people are going to uh, even uh, so sell uh, food food stuff and now we are even selling water right so uh, there was no hotels 
there was no labor class all were self employed they were carigars they were everyone was a self employed person then there was no police even today in many of the remote villages we'll see there is no there are no there are no police why because there are no thefts there are no bad behaviors so that, that is our wonderful dharohar of india girl when she would come out of the home she was not an opportunity she was not seen as an opportunity she was seen as a responsibility why because everyone in that village were her brothers she would be married only to a person from other village <laughs> so therefore she uh, was a responsibility of everyone so she was so protected and now today we have got so many rape cases sometimes you know, news is coming even the brother rapes the real brother rapes the uh, the sister such news is are coming then uh, villages earlier they did not have, even have banks this is also a new concept there were no old asylums because people old people they were worshipable deities in the family then goshalas there were no goshalas every home had around 30 to 40 cows and bulls then there were no hospitals <laughs> no hospitals means people were very healthy all the doctors they were called vaidyas they were really poor so that means not many people were uh, needing the vaidya there were no insurance policies insurance companies so all these things today have joined up and what we are increasing more and more and more is stress tension <laughs> justice education and medical treatment they were free today these three are the most expensive and justice to we don't even get <laughs> even after paying money then lok shikshak people there were lok shikshak they would educate people along with entertainment there were so many people it was a nityotsav every day some new one person would come there was no uh, you know in the morning the vasudev would come vasudev ala ho vasudev ala sakal chaprahari vasudev ala he would come singing and he would glorify lord vishnu what a wonderful way of getting up in a village then in the afternoon there was a person with iktara he would come and he would sing bhajans of you know renunciation so while people were working when such a person is giving sermons singing songs of uh, renunciation these people would be inspired not to do any corruption <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, in this way there were many then there was a sapera you know uh, the sapera means a person with he, he would come with snakes then there was a person with bhalu the bhalu wala he would come and he would show uh, and they would not just come and show some gimmicks they would teach many things then there was a mahot who would come with elephants then there was a madari who would come with his monkeys and they would all do wonderful circus and like that so it was not uh, on screen national geographics no it was real living experience and then there was a jati puran shikshak he would also tell stories about different uh, varieties yeah so th like that they were so these are some of the characteristic features of the village that uh, i wanted to tell they were more prosperous than us they had real gold not just plastic they had real gold they had organic food and they had cordial intimate relationships if i have told all these things there were there not some outcast people yes there were outcast people also and uh, ravindra sharma ji he described them also and <laughs> the the outcast people uh, means the the people who are considered uncivilized and you know they are, in the vedic times they were said uh, they were they they should be ostracized you know they should be remaining outside the uh, the village such people the descriptions shortly i'll just read out all people of the family members you know they sat together drinking alcohol 
smoking and using abusive language. One. Second is they had dogs as their favorite uh, pet animal. Third, uh, they, uh, their fights ended with divorce and then they would live with other different partners. And then fourth, uh, they would not use water after passing stool but use leaves to clean up. <laughs> this is a description of people who were uncivilized. I mean, it sounds similar to the lifestyle of uh, most of the modern day uh, rich class, isn't it? <laughs> So, uh, today, all have to leave homes and travel all over the world for food, for immigration. Uh, they have to migrate so many just for, you know, for their selfish reasons, their own selfish reasons. And they have to do more than one work so that they get enough. Uh, and yet, they are not able to settle their homes. They are not able to educate their children properly so we are we losing our sabhyata our sanskriti our parampara and to to you know get this thing together to establish this these three things the sabhyata the sanskriti and the parampara we at least need a you know a stable society for seven generations at least at one place there should be sthirata for at least seven generations. Then we can have, we can think of such a, you know, today I've just spoken about a dream village, uh, you know, but tomorrow we'll be talking about reality. Uh, today's world and then how we can actually bring about um, after seven generations, maybe this concept will work. Why not? So such a Vedic society is possible, which does not hanker for external pleasures. Bharat has always been for Paramarth, Param Saundarya, you know, and Param Tattva. So what is that Param Tattva? Param Tattva is nothing but Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Krishna, <coughs> when he is pleased, then only this, the Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, yeah, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha. So when the basic provision and, you know, respect, when that is ensured, then only the spiritual, you know, things, you know, that becomes ob obvious. So therefore, but both are so difficult today. The basic provision for just basic provision, you have to travel so long. And for respect, where is the culture remaining to, uh, there's no culture of respect. Uh, there's no culture by which, you know, respect can be given. So that culture is being destroyed very, so very methodically very scientifically uh, with proper plotting there is a proper lobby which is uh, there are many people the bureaucracy the media the uh, politicians everyone are so nicely perfectly coming together just to destroy the culture so uh, <clears throat> how we can you know uh, develop but the constitutional position of the soul is to love and to respect. That is the constitutional position. And therefore, not only uh, Matru Devo Bhava, not only Pitru Devo Bhava, not only Guru Devo Bhava, even enemies, if he comes to our door, he is respected. That is the culture of India. So, uh, in even uh, all the 16 Karigars, I'll just finish it in uh, another five minutes. Please give me five minutes. The 16 samskaras are ensure, they ensure the respect of all the karigars who are supposed to be the shudra class. But see, as the child, when the child requires their service first time in his life, a ceremony is made and these, this is called samskaras. To make the child be respectful towards all the people. So as soon as he is born, the wife of the Safai Wala, she is called for. The whole family, whether it is Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, the whole family waits for her. Because this sanskara is completed when she comes and cleans the nose of the child and bathes the child after he is born. She has got the first adhikar. She has got the right. It is her right to bathe the child who is first born. And when after she... Uh, she does that activity, then the family with lot of love and respect, they 
डू आर टी ऑफ दैट सफाई वाला एंड सफाई वाली बोथ हजबेंड एंड वाइफ दे इन फ्रंट ऑफ ऑल द विलेजर्स दे ऑफर रिस्पेक्ट टू देम बिकॉज वेन आई नीडेड यू इन दिस सेरेमनी यू आर प्रेजेंट आई एम सो ग्रेटफुल टू यू सो दिस वॉज द मूड and then same thing uh, during the karna vedan when the goldsmith would come and he would he would not only just pierce a hole he would also put actual sona the gold into it nowadays of course so they just make hole and the sona i mean that gold has to be bought by the father <laughs> but in a village the sonar would say this is the child of the entire village and therefore even uh, i have got the right to put that sona and then he also would be worshiped and lot of shidha and many things would be given as a offering to that which would always be more than the amount of gold so uh, is it barter system no it was only giving he would also give from with full heart and the family also would give him with full heart so it was a culture of giving then at nam uh, namkaran sanskar so at that time the cradle was made by the sutar the carpenter then even he also would be uh, glorified and felicitated and then he also would be given because he would just give that uh, cradle he was to just make and give in the same way annaprashan during annaprashan whom do you think would be felicitated for anna we require pot so the potter the kumbhar he would be welcome and he would be uh, worshiped so the child as he is growing he is seeing that all these people are glorified why because i needed them and at that time they appeared and then they were worshiped that is why hmm? then when chuda karnam first the barber he also would be felicitated even during vivaha sanskar uh, he is called and he is felicitated he does the uh you know shaving and everything of the groom and then he would he is felicitated at that time also and during antyeshti all the 16 karigars they come and contribute they have to contribute because that is the attachment shown you know that we are with you at this difficult time so the bas wala he would bring the bas lakdi then the khatkar would bring bring his Well, then the patkar, the silk cloth also would the goldsmith again would give the gold. Nowadays, of course, the gold of that dead person only uh, is taken and put in, in his mouth. So that systems are there today, uh, but in a very dilapidated form. Then there is uh, you know barber also comes at that time. So all the sixteen karigars they come and they contribute. That is the the tradition. So when a child also when as he is growing. the entire village would be assessing his growth if suppose if he is misbehaving or like arrogant with the safai wali then they would say hey don't behave like this she had first you know cleaned you when you were born so he would have natural respect for the woman you know this is how the culture of respect was given in the society so even in the family there was a culture of respect the respect means the division was not equal division saman batwara no there was no concept of saman batwara there was uchit batwara means appropriate division just like a small kid is not going to eat the same as a adult and even the old they will be eating differently so in the same way there was first the division of responsibilities and then there would be the uh, you know division of facilities and property like that So, so who will take care of the mama responsibility? Mama responsibility means that uh, seeking a groom for the uh, girl, and then who will be taking care of the social issues? Who will be taking care of the farm? Who will be taking care of the sacred rituals that has to be done? You know, shraddha, pindadan, like that. So accordingly, the facilities would be given. So in this way, the culture of respect that is the dharohar, you know, the great, um, wonderful tradition heritage of our. Uh, indian ancient indian villages and we have to revive it and we do i am not knowing how i am not a visionary but this is just i am just a person who is trying to uh, like a instrument i am the sound box of uh, krishna chaitanya prabhu govind prabhu 
एंड सो मेनी अदर्स रविंद्र शर्मा जी इंदुमती कटतरे जी मुकुल कानिटकर जी एंड अभ्यंकर जी एंड वृंदावन आनंद प्रभु जी एंड मधु गौरंग प्रभु जी सो मेनी पीपल आर देयर फ्रॉम होम वी हैव लर्न एंड आई एम जस्ट प्रेजेंट इट टू यू एंड आई रियली थैंक यू फ्रॉम द बॉटम ऑफ माय हार्ट आई हैव टुडे स्पोकन अ लॉट बिकॉज आई हैव गॉन बियॉन्ड टाइम आई एम एक्सट्रीमली सॉरी फॉर दैट बट दीज इन्फॉर्मेशन आई थॉट दैट आई शुड बी शेयरिंग विथ यू थैंक यू वेरी मच हरे कृष्णा